Hello and welcome to another five tips for ultra low budget feature filmmaking. I am Joel Dick and it is time to delve into chlorine and mine some of the greatest tips and the lessons that Dan and I have learned from making our second feature film. Now, Dan already had a video about this, about the Long Con, which was our first feature film. So go ahead and check that one out first. But without further ado, let's get started. Now the first uh, tip that I have for you today is about locations. Use free ones. What will they do? First, they will inspire you. When you go out to nature and you find beautiful locations that you can use for free, nothing inspires you as a filmmaker more that I have found. And Dan will say the same. The second thing it does is help you with production value. Now, it is very difficult to light a set, and you will learn this from working on any film set uh, that has a moderate budget to a high budget, or even what's considered a low budget of $100,000. You will find that the amount of lights you need, the amount of hands you need on set to make something look really good on a closed set, it's a lot. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort that you as the filmmaker have to put in to get a great result from an indoor set. However, if you go outside and you find great locations that are free, that look beautiful, you can use those and you can get great production quality from those. We've used, utilized this in multiple locations in Chlorine. The majority of our scenes were outside, the majority of our scenes were in free locations that we had access to. Things like friends' homes, Friends' backyards, friends' parents, your own parents. I We shot at my parents' house, we shot at Dan's parents' house, and all of those locations add different production values that you can get that allow you to have an extremely low budget and make something that looks really uh, cinematic and exciting to the viewer. Now let's go into tip number two, which is milk natural light. Natural light for the ultra low budget independent filmmaker is a godsend. If you can go outside and just take your camera with, make sure you have some ND filters, you can make great shots. I cannot tell you how many shots from Chlorine were just us taking a camera out, making sure we have a monitor so we can see what we're shooting, and then boom, call action. There is nothing more beautiful than a sky that has clouds that you're not gonna get anywhere else, or a day that is windy that's gonna make sort of the whole area just breathe life and movement. And one example I wanted to give of this in chlorine specifically was when Dan and I decided to go to a batting cage, which was a free location, first of all, and second of all, it was a windy day. Now, did that make some complications? Yes, it did. It was the, the, the audio was very difficult to work with. But when we looked at the, the content, the, the shot that we came back with, it was something that really was not only stunning, but the movement of the batting cage with the outdoor location, making sure that we had an ND filter on, just made sort of Dan and I standing there look very contrasted to the movement of the wind. And it sort of set us apart from the background and it made just a beautiful uh, vista for the film. One of the big pitfalls of independent films with large budgets is their need to have some sort of um, very big name actor to attach to their project. Now, when you're focusing on micro budget features, there is something that will always help you get started and learn from the beginning and get you the best product possible when you're looking to make your first independent feature or even your second independent feature. And that is consider using cast and crew who are willing to work for free. First off, it seems difficult to resort to using people that aren't going to charge you lots of money because of uh, the connections they have or their uh, clout in the industry. Those are definitely gonna get eyes on your product. But when you're starting out, it's just something you cannot afford. It's not worth it. You need to learn how to make films before you can learn how to make humongous budgets and go to Sundance with your film. It starts with using what you have available. That is the first and most important part of a micro budget is using what you have available and using cast and crew who are your friends, who are your family that are interested in helping you uh, will go a long way in making sure that you are developing as quickly as possible as a filmmaker. At some point down the line, 
you will use named actors if you become successful. But when you're learning in this stage, Dan and I have found that people that are willing to work for free still have fantastic acting abilities. People like Jonathan Wyatt, uh, Anna Dvorak have been the most important crew we have had on the set that makes our production value better. And things like knowing how to give them something in return, not just say, hey, work for us for free and it'll be great. No, we can give you something for your acting reel. You have to know your own value when you are trying to get people to work on your film. Dan and I are putting our own money into making this and knowing that you are giving the actors value as well and a relationship going forward if you start to make money that they will also make money is something that you can work in your favor and get you a product that is better than your average independent filmmaker. The fourth micro budget tip for independent filmmaking is do not let your progress stop. The worst thing for any idea you might have, any project that is going on, is for any number of things to stop your production process. Do not let it happen. For instance, on Chlorine, Dan did not have uh, me for any of the scenes uh, in 4th of July and for any of the scenes in Las Vegas. Well, that didn't stop him from shooting things. He took his camera and he did his best to get great shots and you can see what came of those in the movie. Anything you can do as a creator to keep the progress going will keep the project alive. Dan would be doing edits. I would shoot my own things. Do not let the flow of your independent production cease for any reason. The major reasons that production stops are for things like money, things like a crew member dropping, things like a location being dropped. Do not let those things stop the flow of your production. Now the last tip I have for you micro budget filmmakers out there uh, that pertains specifically to improv when doing a feature film is concerning the theme of your movie. Establish a theme. Because anyone can go around and shoot random scenes, but the only way they become one film is through the theme. A theme is like a foundation for your improv movie. Because when you are going to create any new scenarios, any new scenes, you have to know what you're making them for, the main theme. Now, in Chlorine, this is the theme of family. We have two separate scenarios going on. One is the mob family, and the other is uh, Dan's character and his uh, connection with his sister, the stuff that they went through. So seeing the themes and focusing on that first and then building your story from that will allow your improv movie to go above and beyond uh, what you're going to get with no structure in mind. Thank you for watching this video and listening to the five micro budget tips that we have for you today. Uh, we are so excited for those who watched Chlorine and hope you get more and more out of our experience in making these extremely low budget films. Please uh, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.